Aloha, welcome. Aloha. Um, I'm very excited to be speaking to you today about some things that I am always happy to talk about, and that's technology and how we can use it to improve learning and teaching. In the next 15 minutes, I'm about to reveal to you a shocking tip that's so amazingly simple that you'll wonder why this has not been revealed before. I'm about to reveal to you something that you can do to improve your teaching and also to get online in no time. Okay. Here at BYU Hawaii, uh, we have a mission of teaching students and preparing them to learn, to lead, and to build the kingdom. Uh, our teaching is not just limited to academic subjects, although we do know that that is what is going to help them to become leaders and builders in their communities when they move on. But we have a much grander uh, eternal scheme and perspective. All right. um, so how do we do this? Well, we have a lot of great faculty here. All of you are highly skilled experts who are writing that diploma all the way to BYU-Hawaii, where we have this great institution of higher learning where we mix academics within a uh, spiritual context. And we have great students from all around the world. All of these three combine to um, sort of meet this goal that we have of creating leaders, uh, creating those who are learning and building and leading uh, in, in uh, the world. So where do I fit in? Well, this is where we are now. We're all here talking and trying to figure out how we can improve teaching and learning, learning and teaching, how we can perhaps leverage the different technologies that are available to us so that we can make better learner experiences. Right? Um, one of the big things that we are looking at is creating uh, inc or increasing our online course offerings and also perhaps even getting people to think of creating hybrid courses. You know, this whole idea behind this symposium of trying something new, right? Trying something new is good, but it's not good in, in and of itself. We need to understand why. Why do we want to try something new? Well, the research is out there, and it's surprising, perhaps, to some that studies do support the use of online and hybrid course design. Now, this study that I'm referring to here is one that sort of gives a great overview of all the research that's been going on. So it's, it was done a few years back in 2009, but this was a meta-analysis. They screened over a 1,000 studies, and they found, within these 1,000 studies, uh, 99 that contrasted at least, or had at least one contrast of either online or hybrid versus face-to-face. -face. And so they were able to look at all the quantitative data from these 99 studies and pool from that 51 different independent uh, effect sizes. And so they did a meta-analysis of this. And uh, a meta-analysis, of course, is one of these uh, holy grails of, um, of analyses. And so what they found was that online was better than face-to-face, -face, a very modest effect size, almost insignificant there, but it was still slightly better than fa their face-to-face -face counterparts. Right? They also found that hybrid fared even better than that with a positive mean effect size of uh, 0.35. And so you know, this is very positive and uh, heartening news for those of us who want to develop online and who want to develop these hybrid courses and take advantage of these new technologies. There are a few caveats, though, to consider. In these studies that they analyzed, <coughs> what they found is that you know, there's no way to equalize all the learning time between the courses that were being developed online and those that were carried out strictly face-to-face. -face, right? So there's differences there. And then there's also differences in the type of teaching that's going on. And so they offer this sort of disclaimer in that you know, there's a combination of elements here that explain these positive effects of the online courses and also the hybrid courses. So you're probably scratching your head thinking, OK, you know, those are very small effect sizes. And those are probably explained by these differences. So really, good teaching is just good, right? There's, there's no way around that. Good teaching is good. Um, so there's nothing to see here. But I think there is something to see here. Right? 
good teaching and learning can happen in online and hybrid contexts. Perhaps, you know, I have spoken to a few people, I don't know if those people exist in this room, but some who would say that online learning just doesn't work or hybrid learning just doesn't work. Well, the, the studies show that they do show a modest improvement, and if those improvements are uh, explained by the differences in curriculum design, differences in learner time on task, then we can say that good teaching can happen online. This is some general idea that we can sort of pull from the studies that, have that are out there. Right? I can help you to create, to create these online experiences and to develop the online courses. And this is how. Um, all you need is to come to us with an idea. This, if there's a simple trick, right? If there is a magic bullet that will um, get you online in no time, it is an idea. All you need to have is an idea. A desire to change, a desire to try something new, a desire to come meet with this handsome guy here and talk about <laughs> your idea. I can help you to understand what we can do, what types of tools are available for you, and also uh, how we can uh, design the learning experience such that learners will get the most out of the technology and that it serves to meet your learning goals and teaching goals rather than just implementing the technology for newness sake, because that will always wear off quickly. We have a great team in the online department and also at the CLT. We got Bren right here, he's a media expert. Jared also is an expert in graphic design, and then we have uh, Joni helping out in, uh, in the development of your courses. And then of course we have the software. We have all the sort of tools, hardware, software, and expertise between us to help you get online. And we'll take a look at some examples at the end of my remarks. What this will all lead to, hopefully, is a cornucopia, holy grailish sort of um, you know, plethora of good practice and uh, great teaching, all right? Which will then lead to more effective you, happier, smarter students, and we'll be able to accomplish those goals that we talked about at the beginning of this presentation. All right, so now I'd like to take a look at a few examples of um, some of the things that we've developed in the last couple of weeks, all right? So this is, this here is a tutorial that I put together for some of my students who are in the online EIL program. This is to help them to get acquainted <laughs> with Google communities. I want them to increase the time that they spend in English, not just with their tutor during the set tutor session, but also in the Google community with a variety of high ability English language users. So I put together this tutorial. Okay, okay let's, let's get started. started. It walks them through the entire process. Um, it's interactive. You can click through to specific elements that you want to go to. And then you can, of course, go to a quiz, uh, which is not your typical quiz. Right? This is a quiz that actually has fields that you can click through, sort of, if you want to think of it as a game, you know, sort of gamish elements to it. So we'll click there. We'll click Submit. OK, I was right. Go on to the next. OK. so. Click the area that lets you find the community. Okay, it's not these. I paid close attention to the tutorial, so now I'm gonna click, I'm gonna actually do this on the screen that I'm presented with when I go and try and set this up for myself. I'll click here, click Submit, and so on. So this is, these are some of the sorts of interactions and uh, interactive sort of um, elements that we can build into any of the learning experiences that you want to create online. Another example, this is Kali. He came in with an idea. He sat down and he said, hey, I want to uh, start getting working on this online stuff. I want to maybe start with a hybrid because you know online is one thing, but hybrid is a step <coughs> to that. right? And so we created this uh, video here with him. And here are some chapter markers so we can quickly navigate to which part of his video we want to listen to. Do we want to go to Ho'a'o? No, we want to go to Learn Lead Bay <coughs> and just go ahead and click. What I want to do now is I want to link my philosophy to Watch a minute of this. The student learning framework here on campus, prepare, engage, improve, and link that to another three letters, which 
I'm sure you've heard of recently, and you'll hear this a lot. And those three letters are L, L, and B. Now again, think in your mind, what do those, those letters represent? And when I say them, then you'll know right, right away. Okay, the, L, the first L is for learn, the second L is for lead, and the third, and sorry, the third letter, the B is for build. Okay, so there's another example. This was not something that he had to plan for a long time. He's an expert at speaking, so he just got in front of the camera. We took about an hour, filmed it, and put together the graphics a little bit later. Bren was you know, really great at that, able to get that up and running really quick. And now he has this introductory um, video for all of his classes for you know, however long until he wants to change it up a little. Here's another example of things that we're doing. This is Troy's class. This represents a little more planning, actually a lot more planning. This one comes with a script. It comes with a lot of things that you'll see reflected in the, um, the final product here. So there should be some narration here. These are some elements that still need to be put together. So as a student, you know, let's see if you can figure out which envelope has the antidote. Right. So you can hover over here, you can go here, here. Okay, so once you figured it out, you can go ahead and continue. If you gave a sincere and serious effort to solve the antidote problem, even if you did not get the correct solution, you sent your brain a signal that this is an important task. Somehow our quest to know signals the brain to create the connections that will allow us to solve similar problems. These connections are called neural networks and synapses. The video you're watching shows how these neural networks form in our brain. Okay, so these are just some of the examples um, that kind of highlight the things that we're doing right now with uh, faculty and the things that are possible if you just have the imagination and the willingness and the idea to just give it a shot. Just come in with your idea, we'll talk about what can be done, and we'll just get to work doing it. Thank you. <laughs>